Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to upgrade the processor in a late 2013 Mac Pro. We've already gathered our materials, shut down, unplugged, and disconnected our Mac Pro, and are working on a soft, static-free work surface. We are now ready to begin. First, slide the cover lock button on the back of the Mac Pro over to the unlocked position. Then, lift the outer case straight up and off. First, we need to remove the memory, which is in two banks, one on each side. To open one of the banks, press the tab with the white arrow on it, and the bank should angle out. You can then remove the memory by pulling it straight out of its slot. Repeat the process on the other side. Using your Torx T10 screwdriver, remove the five screws along the top edge of the Mac Pro. Once these are removed, you can flip the fan assembly up. Use your Torx T8 screwdriver to loosen the two screws holding the fan cable connector retainer in place. These are captive screws, so you should be able to remove the entire retainer at once. Then, use your nylon pry tool to gently disconnect the fan cable. Finally, disconnect the airport antenna cable, and you can set the fan assembly aside. Now we can remove the five Torx T10 screws that hold the bottom cover on. Flip the unit over and remove the bottom cover. On two of the sides, there are large cable connectors which need to be lifted straight up from their sockets. Next, remove these two Torx T8 screws. There is a connector in this position on the other side of this board. You'll need to carefully lift upward on the board to detach it from this connector, allowing you to move it free. Finally, detach the cable connector on the underside of the board like you did the other two. You can now set the board aside. Place the main unit back into the bottom cover to help keep things together during the next step. We're going to remove this grate. To do this, we need to remove the Torx T5 screw on each side that holds it in place. Once you've removed both screws, you should be able to lift the grate free. Underneath the grate are six silver screws that hold the power supply in place. Remove these with your Torx T8 screwdriver. Once you've removed these screws, you should be able to lift the power supply away and set it aside. Next, we need to remove these four Torx T10 screws that hold the processor to the heatsink. Remove them in a star pattern so that there's no excessive stress on any one side of the processor at any given time. Once you've removed these screws, slowly wiggle the processor card back and forth to help loosen the seal of the thermal paste. Then, lift the card free. On the back side of the card, you'll see the processor with a large amount of thermal paste on it. Use some 90% rubbing alcohol and a cloth to carefully remove most of the paste. This will save considerable mess during the next step. Once the processor is cleaned off, hold the card in your hand and remove the inner four Torx T10 screws that hold the retainer in place. Again, use a star pattern to avoid undue stress on the processor.
Once you've removed the four screws, you can remove this bracket and this plate. Then flip the card back over. Now when you flip the card back over, the retainer is no longer attached and you can lift the processor out of its socket. Before installing the new processor, we'll want to remove any old thermal paste from the heatsink and retainer. Again, a cloth and some 90% rubbing alcohol will do the trick nicely. On the new processor, there will be notches on two edges. If placed in the socket incorrectly, it will not lay flat. Once the processor is in place, set the retainer over it. Hold the two pieces tightly to the card as you flip it over. Slide the pins on the plate through the board and into the holes on the back of the retainer. You may have to move the retainer slightly to make sure the holes line up. Then, place the bracket back into place and reattach it with its four screws. Tighten the screws down in that same star pattern until tight. Don't tighten down too hard or you risk damaging the processor. Flip the card back over and spread a thin layer of thermal paste on the cap of the processor. Don't use too much, just enough to have a thin but solid coat. Set the card into place and push gently to make sure the two contact surfaces meet. Then, replace the four screws that hold the processor to the heatsink and tighten them down using that same star pattern. Temporarily set the unit back into the bottom cap, which can then be used as a guide to set the power supply back into place. Next, replace the six Torx T8 screws that attach the power supply to the rest of the computer. Then, set the top grate back into place and secure it with the two Torx T5 screws. You can once again remove the unit from the bottom cover and flip it over. Line the first cable connector up with its socket by making sure the two pins go through the two holes, then press the connectors together. Next, line up the slot on the bottom board with this connector and push them together until they're fully seated. Then, reconnect the other two ribbon cables like you did the first one. Finally, secure the bottom board with the two Torx T8 screws. Place the whole assembly back into the bottom cap and replace the five screws that hold it there. You may have to adjust the power supply a little to make sure its screws attach flush. Take the fan unit and reattach first the airport antenna connector, then the fan cable by simply aligning the connectors and pressing them together. Then, replace the cable retainer and tighten the two screws down. You can now lower the fan assembly back into place and replace the five Torx T10 screws along the top edge. Again, you may need to adjust the power supply panel slightly to fit.
The notches in the memory modules line up with the pins in the memory slots. Slide the memory module into one of the slots in the memory bank and push it all the way in until it snaps into place. Then, do the same thing for the other slot in the bank. Then, push on the black tab on the top of the bank until it clicks into place. Repeat the process for the other side. Slide the top cover back onto the Mac Pro, making sure that the back opening is lined up with the ports. As long as you're relatively close, it should automatically align itself. Finally, slide the locking tab back into the locked position. You may now hook your Mac Pro back up, plug it in, and turn it on.